They like to give us hope and then squash that hope. Alright, so we won't talk anymore about them. Uh, I feel bad for Philip Rivers. But... So, um, what we're getting into is, and again, I think I said this last time, the reason people dislike this is it is just like a foreign language class where you have to translate from one language to another. And I call it translating from English to mathish. When you go from a word problem to a math equation. A math equation is a sentence, so it is translation. Um, and also part of the problem is a lot of times, I think we talked about this last time, problems are created where there's a guy that forgot how much money he put into a bank account or something. And you're like, who the hell is this guy? Uh, or <laughs> you know you want your garden to be two feet longer than the width, and you're like, why would that be true? But that's related to something that could actually happen. Uh, very often, real-life stuff involves much uglier equations than we're ready to handle. Because it's real life. It's going to involve a lot more freakiness than uh, we're able to handle at this point. So a lot of the word problems are going to feel a little contrived because they almost have to be. Um, but the, the main thing with word problems, let's do a, a, a classic kind of word problem. Um, so this is something like uh, Fred has two less than three times as many apples as Bart together they have <coughs> uh, let's see what would make sense here John. yeah sure together they have uh, six Apples. How many does each one have? Just to be really, make sure you guys understand. If you get the answer and you don't use any algebra, I have to refer you to the first word in the title of this course. So I always relate this to. Uh, I don't think I've said, told you the story. I've talked to you about driver's ed yet? About uh, if if you're taking driver's ed, you know, you guys know what driver's ed is. So when I took driver's ed. I had two teachers, one of them looked just like Fred Flintstone, freaked me out, and the second one was always a little drunk. That was really exciting to be on the road with this guy. Couldn't understand in the first place. So you right here, and you take a right? Uh, so anyway, that was my experience with driver's ed. But if I told you, if I was your driver's ed instructor, and I said, I need you to drive to the mall, and if you can make it there, you'll pass this test. You guys with me so far? So you proceed to walk to the mall, and you call me, you're like, I'm at the mall, <laughs> I made it, and I'm like, well, the car is still here, what the hell are you doing? So what the hell has this got to do with anything? So he made it to the mall, but am I going to pass him on this test? Am I going to pass this person? Hell no, it's driving class. The point of it wasn't to get to the mall, the point of it was to use the car to get to the mall. So what's this got to do with algebra? Right, you're all like, what the hell? Uh, if I ask you to solve a word problem and you do not use algebra to do it, I don't care that you made it to the mall. I don't care that you got the answer. You didn't do what we're here to learn. Does that make sense? So I don't want to have anybody tell me, well, I got seven. The answer is seven. You should give me some points. Well, you didn't use any damn algebra. So it's really nice that we have problems that you should know the answer to. There's other ways to get the answer so you know what the answer should be. But the whole point of this is to get used to algebra with these really simple problems. So when you hit problems that are almost impossible to do without algebra, you can do the algebra no problem. That's the whole point of this. I like it. I like it. So a lot of these problems, you just come up with the answer a different way, which is beautiful. That's awesome. If this wasn't an algebra class, right? But this is. Um, all right. So some of you guys already know the answer. You just kind of ran through some possibilities. Um, and, and maybe some, some, maybe somebody's got like half an apple or something, you never know. So how, how would I set this thing up? 
what, what am I? Who are the players in this problem? Who are the players? And, and what what is the main thing about them? How many players do I have in this problem? Two. Two. And what is it about them that I'm interested in? How many apples? So my my two things in English. The first part of a word problem is related to that first word in word problem. Word. So it's not mathematical in any sense. It's purely English-wise, what are the things being discussed in this problem? So it's the number of apples that Fred has, and the number of apples that Bart has. Cool. I like it. So I don't have a clue how many either of them has. So what I do, the reason we do this with math is I can't work with an empty space. I can't do something to an empty space. So I fill it with something. And we weren't there when they chose this, but they chose X. They weren't a bunch of freaking pirates, right? X marks the answer. They just chose X. So, so, and we don't have to use X. You could use whatever letter you want to. It doesn't really matter. But primarily, it's uh, you often remember that X and Y are the big things that are used. But here you can use whatever letter you want to. So the first thing I need to figure out is who depends on the other dude? Which, who would I have to know first? So I know that Fred has two less than three times what Bart has. So who would I need to know first to be able to figure out the other dude? Bart. If I knew that Bart had four apples, then how many apples would Fred have? Two. Two less than three times Bart. So if Bart had four apples, how many apples would Fred have? So Bart had 12. Sorry, Bart has four. Fred has three times four. Minus two, so that'd be ten. I like it. If Bart had seven apples, Fred would have how many? Five. So it'd be three times Bart's, three times seven, minus two, nineteen. So how many apples does Bart have? X. I love it. Sweet. I love it. I love it. And this is where students don't like it, but too bad. In algebra, you pretend like you know the answer. Because then you can use what you just said to create a, a math sentence that you can then solve. That's the whole reason we bring variables in, because we don't know what the hell it is. So you can call it X. You can call it B for Bart. It doesn't matter. Let's stick with X for right now. It doesn't matter. So if Bart has X apples, when he had four apples, we did three times four minus two. When he had seven apples, we did three times seven minus two for Fred. So if Bart has X apples, how many does Fred have? Three X minus two. Three times X minus two. Whatever the hell Bart has, Fred has three times that minus two. So the first step, the most important step, well, one of the first steps, is finding out who's just X, because then everything else builds off of that. I like it. So Fred's got to be three X minus two. So what's got to be true? For example, how would you check this? Is this the answer? Is this the answer? How many do they have together? In this example, they have 14 all together, right? How many do they have all together here? 20, 26, right? So those, neither one of those are the answers. But what's got to happen? What do we just do? However many Bart has plus however many Fred has has to equal... Six, I like it. So some of you guys, I love the fact that some of you guys are bored currently. That's awesome. If you're if you're cool with word problems, you're gonna love this section. If you are not, you want to be paying some good attention. Uh, so I have to take however many Fred has and add it to however many Bart has, and that of course has to be what six, because I know that together they have six apples. So this is backwards from ordinary stuff that we do every day, because normally I see I've got this many apples and this, I got this many total. I didn't know how many total I had to begin with. Here, I know how many total I have to begin with. I'm working backwards to see how much each one had. And now, now it should be the easy step. 
Yeah, combine like terms. And then add two. So we get four x equals eight. And then divide by four. So x is two. Now don't just circle that and go on. Word problems, a couple things. I require units. If you don't put units, I'm gonna be a complete dork and right next to this two hamsters. Question mark, two shoes, question mark, whatever the hell comes to mind. So what's two mean? What's that two mean? What's that x equals two mean? Yeah, Bart, right here, this step. You guys gotta stay with me. This step is the one that people skip and it screws them the hell over. This step helped me set this up. This step helps me answer the damn thing, right? X is two, so Bart's got two apples. So how many apples does Fred have? Three four. times two, two minus two, four apples. four apples. And does that check? Yes, well it's supposed to happen. Together they're supposed to have six, and together they have six, thank God. So you can check your answer at the end. I just missed why we added another x. So it's three x minus Oh, beautiful. Plus x. I love it. I love it. The biggest mistake people make with this problem is your eyes go to this. Uh, two less than three, say, okay, two less than three times, and then it's gotta be six. But who is three X minus two? Who does that represent? Fred. Fred. Does this say Fred has six apples all by himself? Oh, uh, he wishes that apple of a dude, right? I don't know. You guys kind of with me? So I love it. You gotta have freaking Fred. And you gotta have freaking Bart together. But when you skip this step, that happens. Because your brain sees the algebra, you go, well, Jeff is all about freaking algebra. I can write two less than three times. And I see the number six, I'm gonna make it equal six. And then you get freaky answers. Like he's got one third of an apple, and this other guy, you know. You guys understand what's happening? So I love that you said that, but this, what's the this sentence gotta relate to? Fred's apples added to Bart's apples is six. I mean, that's the sentence. That's the English sentence that, that math statement represents. I like it. I like it. No matter what I say, it's going to take something out of your funk. You're like, word problems. I knew this day would come. Ah. Yes, sir. So what is that x minus 2 represent? What's 3x minus 2 represent? Uh, Fred. Fred. And what's the problem say? Together. So if you wrote this, you're saying Fred's got six. Fred ain't got six. Fred plus Bart has six. I like it. And that's why this step makes sure you don't forget anybody. All right, maybe. Let's do another one. Yes. All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we might as well do that. some reason, this is God, this is my uh, belief system, I have to set my garden up so the length is one more than twice the width. So whatever the width is, the length is going to be one more than that. So if the width was four, what would the length be? It's one more than twice the width. So if the width was four, the length would be nine. I like it. Right? Just don't forget that I want it fenced all the way in. Now, why am I going to fence my garden in? Probably to keep whatever the hell out. Right? Go for some, go underneath the damn thing. What can I do about that? So I have underground electrical current. Get them gophers. I don't know. I don't have to work. So. 
Uh, so I'm going to fence this bad boy in. And let's say I have, what you got, Jeff? I don't know, Jeff. I have, let me make this actually work. Yeah, I have 32 feet of fencing. I want to use all of it. You guys with me? 32 feet of fencing. I want to use all of it. Now, I want to do a problem like this with you because the first step on this problem is actually, uh, this problem, it didn't make any sense to draw anything. You can draw an apple. You can draw a bar eating apples. They don't have a damn thing to do with the problem, right? But when it's a geometric problem, you definitely want to draw the picture for yourself and label it just to make it anchored as to what the hell is going on. So I got my little garden, rectangular garden. So what are my players here? <coughs> length and width. So I got length and width. Which one's just going to be X? Width. Yeah, why is the width going to be just X? Yeah, the length is dependent on the width. You see that? The length is one more than twice, so I've got to know the width first. So if I call the width X, I can then do something to X. Right now, the width is empty space. I don't want to try to write twice empty space and do shit with empty space. No. Let me just call it X, just to have something there to work with. Let me stop for a second. Okay. Cool. So I have uh, the width is x. So what's the length going to be? Two x. Yeah, one more than twice. So two x plus one. So now you can label this. Here's x. Here's two x plus one. The biggest mistake I see on this problem, and so like a classic problem, this rectangular shape, is somebody will tell me x plus two x plus one equals thirty-two. Why do I not want that person making this for me? Again, I'm trying to keep out rabbits and stuff, right? You with me? So if, I, if they do x plus 2x plus 1 equals 32, where are they putting the fence? Here and there. So what's happening to these sides? They are wide open. The hell sense does that make? It's like, I hope that rabbit don't, oh shit. Wow. No, that's, that's no good. That rabbit's going to figure it out. That rabbit's hungry. I like it. So I have to get all the freaking sides. I mean, it's just such a common mistake. It drives me a little crazy. That's why when you draw a picture, label everything about the picture. So this side's going to be what? The same as that. they got to be. And of course, this side is? Yes. So what's the equation going to be? What's the, how does the 32 relate to this geometrically? 2x plus 1. Uh, area? No, no. Okay, wait, wait. No, no. No, no. Don't, don't overthink it. So real quick, if my width was 4, my length would be 9, right? If that was true. Now what's the perimeter of this? Isn't this, if I put 4 feet of fence, 9 feet of fence, 4 feet of fence, 9 feet of fence, wouldn't that equal the total amount of fence? Yeah, this currently is 26, the perimeter. So this is about perimeter. I'm going to put that fence, I'm not going to lay the fence down and cover this. That would be area. If I said, how much carpet do I need to cover a room? Oh shit, I need to set up an area formula, right? I want to cover the damn thing. Do I want to set my fence? Yeah, just put the fence down. Good. Uh, yeah. I'm going to grow shit. Yeah. Push the fence up, the little carrots are like, please. And then rabbits come over and say, yeah. Uh, whatever, I don't know what they say. <laughs> so my point is you got to make it all the way around this bad boy. So what do I get when I accumulate? I get 2x plus 1 plus x plus 2x plus 1 plus x equals 32. I love it. So it's not just throw some variables down and some numbers and pray to God. It's actually got to make sense. How do you find the perimeter of this? You add up all the sides. How do you find the printer this? You add up all the freaking sides. There are X's. Who cares? What are X's? What are X letters? What do they represent? What does an, a variable represent? Why did we call Fred, uh, who is it? Why did we call Bart X here? Because we didn't know what number of apples. So isn't a variable just a number I don't know yet? 
So whatever numbers do, variables also have to do because they are just numbers. That's all they are. These are numbers I don't know yet, so that's why they're a little harder to work with, but they're freaking numbers. So whatever numbers do, variables will also do. So if you add up numbers to get the A perimeter, you add up the letters to get the perimeter. And I know the perimeter has to be 32 to use all that fence. Cool. Take a minute and solve that. I can catch up with who just came in. Michael. Oh, that's back there. Ashley? catch up to you. 2, 3, 5, 6x plus 2 is 32, right? And then you subtract 2, 6x is 30, and then you divide by 6, you get x is 5, so what the hell does that mean? I broke my rule over here, I won't do that. Apples, yeah. So the, uh, the width is 5 what? Feet? Right. Again, you don't put units. I'm going to be the dork. I'm going to say five light years. Right. That's the garden. Uh, and then what's the length going to be? Yeah, twice five is 10 plus one is 11 feet. Does that make sense? Does that work? Five and five is 10. 11 and 11 is 22. 10 and 22 is 32. Checks. All the way around would be 32 feet. I like it. So whatever we would do if we knew the numbers is exactly what we do if we don't because they're still numbers. They're numbers I don't know yet, but who cares? They're just numbers. Maybe, maybe. Uh, let's see. Is there one more type I want to do? No. One more type. test, this would be, the section of word problems would say, solve the following by setting up a variable and then setting up the equation, blah, blah, blah. So there's no way around saying, you didn't tell me, because you can get this answer a lot of different ways, which is fine, which is one reason why 120 exists. So all of you that are going to take Math 120, the really nice thing with Math 120 is you've met your algebra requirement. 120 then says algebra is just one way to solve certain things, and for some things, algebra is the best way to do it, believe it or not. But in 120, you can do it any freaking way you can think of, as long as you show your work. That's why Math 120 exists. You get through all your algebra, and then you're like, well, that's one more tool on my belt. If I need algebra, I can whip that thing out. But in Math 120, you can use whatever the hell makes sense. Here, too bad. Right. You've got to use algebra because we're, getting, we're learning algebra. They don't make sense. So how many players are involved in this problem? Three, obviously. Yeah, I like it. Now, the weird thing is, what the hell is three? Can somebody just give me? And do you see how I keep doing this? I keep giving myself a number to work with so my brain can tell what the hell's going on here better. So let me give myself an example situation. Can somebody give me three consecutive odd integers? Three. Three. Five, Five seven. seven. I like it. Sure. And they would add up to be 15. 15. So that's obviously not the answer, but that is one possible uh, 
way to say to give an example of what this is. So whatever number you pick first, if you pick 11 first, the next number is how far away from that? What is the next odd integer? 13. 13. How far away did I, how did I get from 11 to 13? Two. I added two. And then how do I get to the next number? I add two more. It's crazy. So what is the first number that is part of the answer? What is the first number? X, 11. I love some of you guys are still like, I don't know. Well, good. Say X. If you're going to say, I don't know, say X. You guys with me? So the first number is X. The next one has to be what? X plus two. Kick ass. So what I really wish students could totally understand is this models every one of these that I could possibly imagine. It does all of them at once. So that's one specific example. That's another specific example. Let me do all of them. Let me do an infinite number of, of uh, triplets of odd numbers. That's what we're doing when we write this. We've just written an infinite number of odd numbers. What would this one be? Four. four. I like it. Two more than that. So if x was 301, this would be 303, and this would be 305. It models every possible one. Now, I specifically want the, the triplet that does what? When I add them together, it makes 93 to gas. So that's how I narrow it down from an infinite number of possibilities to one possibility. The only triplet that makes 93 when I add them up. So I, that's how I set up my equation. What's the equation going to be? X plus X plus 2 plus So this is really going to drive some people crazy that are like, why are you putting all those X's up there? Because I need this and this and this to show up. I need the first number and the second number and the third number to make 93. That's what this step does for you. right? So this is the first, second, third number, right? Bang, bang, bang. So those are my three players involved. How are we doing? And then what are those players supposed to do together? Add to make 93, and now it should be the easy step. Should be. So what do you get? X, X, X. Two and four. Subtract six. Subtract six. Three X equals? Seven divided by three. X is twenty-nine. So, what are your answers then? First number is twenty-nine. The second number is thirty-one. Thirty-three. Now, if you were in math one twenty. I would expect you to not do algebra. Algebra is not the best way to do this problem. So then I always get a student who's like, well, why did we do algebra? Because you're in algebra class. I don't care what the problem is or what the best way to do it, we are currently learning algebra. So if the best way to get somewhere was not in a car, because I could just walk a few feet in a car, i got to go all the way down there and then all the way back. But you're in driver's ed class, the walking ain't going to do shit for you. you got to learn how to drive. That's the whole point. You guys... Follow. So I know on one level it's frustrating if you can get the answer directly and you're like, well, hi, the algebra, that's not the... Well, because the point of this class is not to get the answer. The point of this class is to get used to the algebra. That's the point of this class. I like it. Or one point of this class. This class is a lot of points. Uh, where was I? Uh, I think I'm good there. Oh, if you're in Math 120, you can just cut this in thirds, 31, and then go up and down from that. 29, 31, 33. That would be a beautiful way to do it. Here, no. I'll go, oh, that's nice. Minus all. No good. Algebra. I must see algebra happening. And don't just say, I'll put an X there, it's algebra. No. Use it. Set up an equation, so forth. Okay. So let me do this. Uh, I've got a little hand out here. I've got two examples with actual colors in them. It's crazy for me. And on the back are several problems I want you guys to do. You can work together if you want to. If you're a lone wolf, you can do it that way.
follow the steps, you'll be less likely to make a mistake.